Hello, y'all beautiful people. Welcome to another beautiful day. I hope your day is beautiful. There we've used beautiful four times now. What we are doing uh, currently is I just did a little sketch up here of a bat house that we're gonna be building. Uh, this is kind of just like, it's gonna be a rough draft type of a put together project right here. So uh, basically I, I cut my pieces, my 36 inch pieces already for the sides, but you know, the basic layout of a bat house is you've got a little house here, it's opened up underneath, and then there is slats that go up vertically that are about an inch apart, inch and a quarter apart, that the bats can then, you know, cling onto this side, cling onto that side, right there, all along up these spaces. And so like I said, this is gonna kind of be more of like a little rough concept. So I'm just using some cheap pine boards that we had in the back shed um, to put it together. So with this cheap pine, it'll probably last a couple of years, but if you use something that was more sturdy or something that was well finished and, and um, waterproofed and whatnot could last, you know, 10 years or something like that, 10, 15, 20 years. But I really wanna just get this put together and um, make sure it's something that I can do easily, something that gets put together in a nice fashion and kind of a proof of concept for me. So I'll, I'll run you guys around everything that we're gonna do to put this together step by step. And we've got the first pieces cut and I'll show you what those are. These are the 36 inch sides. So they're gonna be vertical like this. And then the other pieces will be placed in vertically like this up along the whole thing. So we've got these cut. The next step that we have to do is get our vertical pieces ready for the box. And then after that, we will do the, all we have to do is cut a piece at 36 inches, just like that for the back. And then a 34 inch piece, I did a two inch offset um, for the front piece. And then have to cut one top wedge as well for it. So if you look at the drawing, I think it makes, it just makes sense whether or not this is true that I have a couple of different heights on it. So if some bats have certain preferences, you know, we got the young kids up in front that want to be up and have this little bit of free space underneath them. And we got the old folks in the back that love the strong, secure point all the way, <laughs> whatever it might be. I just think it makes more sense to have different layers to it. So let's do 34 inches here. We'll do another one that is 30 inches. And then the other sets will do maybe around 28 or 26 inches for these. If you didn't gather this, this is the side profile. So if this were a 3D image, we could turn it like this, and then we would be looking at the front of it. So this is a cut section of the side. So this is the height difference on the first two. This one, the first cut, it was already a little bit sideways on the cut piece of wood, but luckily it doesn't matter because really they're just gonna be stacked up inside that box. So um, these, these pieces, when you're cutting these ones can be really rough as long as your, your vertical edges are totally straight. That is what matters the most. And with my leftover piece, we have um, a dimension of 38 and a half inches. So I'm just gonna cut them, uh, make a cut at 19 and three quarters. Don't have to be perfect, but that way uh, we're not wasting any wood. <laughs> Although they're not laid out exactly where they're at, you're gonna see the different layers here. So boom, boom, boom. And then those two up there are gonna be spread throughout this box. The next step is going to be a couple of horizontal stripes or lines down these boards. So we're gonna make, uh, make cuts down the board, just like this, in order to give them a little something to grab their little feet on. So we're gonna set this to, I don't know, just a tiny little bit. 
you know, I'm taking off basically a saw, a tooth blade worth, and we're just gonna be running this down. After we plug it in, of course. All right, so just like that, small little groove that I can put on both sides of this board here. That's another thing that does not have to be perfect. It's definitely anywhere near perfect in nature, or it is perfect in nature because it's nature, but when we're duplicating it like this, you can just really run it down um, just fine. Otherwise, sometimes I've seen people put, you know, metal uh, steel mesh all the way through there too, but I really just want to stick with these, um, the horizontal lines down the board. Just like that. See how, how easy that is? The second side is actually easier because after you do the first side, you can kind of line up the saw. I like to do a little bit off center, so I just tried to run the saw down the center of each of these spaces. Like that. So we got both sides of that one done. Ain't that there, beautiful sight. <laughs> So yeah, just run them right down. Don't be afraid of exact measurements or anything. Yeah, I ended up spacing them about an inch apart. Um, of course, you know, you're gonna have the bats hanging there and all kinds of different formations and stuff. So just do the best you can. And that's all that matters. But you just run the slats down both sides like that. And we are ready to place them right here vertically inside our outside edges. All right, now we're kind of at the tricky part and I'm sure I could use all kinds of braces and whatnot to do this, but we want to line up our boards so there's about one inch of a gap on each side. So I've got a mark at inch and three eighths here, inch and three eighths down below. I'm just gonna tap in uh, my initial nail to that spot. So that way we can just line up the board a little bit, tap in those two, and then the rest can follow suit. Here we're going, just penetrating through the other side. We're simply gonna place it up above. Look at our mark underneath. Just about right there. So you can just tap it in a little bit. And same thing right here. You could also make grooves on the inside of your board and, and then just slide this in here. But there's so many different ways you could complete this. This is just my most simplistic way of, you know, again, proof of concept to get this thing built and see how it performs out in the field. This board ended up an inch and three quarters from the outside edge. So what I will do then is add in one more inch to this, make a mark right there, make a mark down here. And that's where our next board's gotta be. We lined up down there. Now, as you can tell here, so we've got that spacing in between. Perfect. Something that's helpful once you get this second one in, or you can do the math beforehand, figure out the dimension of your boards. So then you figure how to get an inch in between those. In this case, I will be making my um, nail holes at about an inch and seven eighths apart uh, from each other. So from this point, I can just mark inch and seven eighths all the way down. Then we'll be good to go. It just kind of lays it out a little bit easier for you. All right, so here's what we've got right now. Of course, they're a little bit off center, but once I squeeze them all together and everything and get the next side in, 
that is our step that we're gonna take. So kind of looking at the side here, they're gonna have this back one to go on to. And then one, two, three, four, and the front. So they'll have five, actually six, whole layers to go into, um, which is gonna be awesome. I think this will hold quite a few bats, several hundred bats could be in here if it fills up, which is really, really awesome. So the next step is to simply uh, flip this on its side like that, and then get our next piece in. Just measuring on both sides. Getting our straight line in there. And just go to town with these nails. So when you're doing this part, you still wanna kind of do the same thing. You're gonna be lining up to be about an inch apart there. Just like this third one, we'll have to pull in a little bit and then nail. Just wanna make sure everything is square in there. The second half here is gonna be a little more tricky um, to get them all in line. You can definitely feel if you miss the board, if you happen to go through the side or something like that, you can feel the nail go through and you might just have to reposition. Like I had to do that once over here. Just barely missed it and chipped off the side, so I wanted to get uh, another nail point in. But don't be afraid. Um, if it seems like it's not lining up, just to check and see underneath, you might have to pivot the board a little bit one way or the other to get it lined in. Da da da! Almost there. Pretty evenly spaced. Definitely good enough for this book. Um, the only thing I would change is just because I, after you do the cuts, there's only so much space here for the nail to go in. So, you know, if you imagine, I have only got like three eighths of an inch to work with there in the middle, um, that the nails tend to kind of split off the edge. And once they do, they really work themselves out. Probably go with a little bit thicker wood in between when doing this. Otherwise, I'm going to flip it around this way to show you too. Otherwise, this is perfect. This will, this will work out great for him. And I was looking for some more wood to finish off this here, but believe it or not, just the two pieces of pine that I brought over was just enough to get this done. So what we need to do now is cut a top lid. It's gonna have an overhang. So it's gonna hang a couple inches past here. And then I'm gonna get a piece that's gonna slide right inside here. And then same thing on this backside. Thing I did realize though is I don't have quite enough space back here because these boards are the same width as the pine that I would cut. Probably gonna try and find a different piece if I can that's wide enough and over 36 inches so I, I can put it on this back side instead of inside. That way I get this whole thing um, for the bats as well. And then we are gonna upcycle this here. This is a, it's weather treated for sure. I can tell it's got that red line on there. Um, old weather treated should be plenty fine to keep water out of the top of this thing. I found the perfect piece that's got a little overhang, which is exactly what I was looking for now. I, I realized it. So that way I can use these edges to secure it uh, to the barn. It's here, it has arrived. We are completed. We have plenty of beautiful space in there. For all the bats, so now we've gotta go hang it up.
This has been really fun to make. I'm excited to make more of them in the future as well. I think our proof of concept has been proofed. We're gonna put it up next to this existing bat house that's here. This is always filled with bats. Uh, the species of bats, I think they do hibernate in winter. Some of them stick around in local areas and caves and everything, um, but I'm expecting these to hibernate. And so they might not be here for much longer uh, this fall. Uh, we're, we're getting towards the end of the season, but hopefully we could get them recognizing this in the location. So what I've done is just put a nail down below where hopefully I can set up this uh, bat house, lean it up against there, get a couple of nails in it, and then secure the rest of the, the thing from that point on. Probably could have laid out that out a little bit better, but Oh gosh, it's so beautiful. I love it. Beautifully imperfect, beautifully fun, and beautifully resourceful. We reuse a lot of this wood. We didn't have to buy anything. We made sure we didn't use high quality wood for it. I didn't have to, I realized I didn't have to do the whole top exactly how I did because I already have this eave on the on grandpa's barn. See right there. It's already covered and everything, so probably didn't need that as much, but I obviously had to show you guys that during the entire process. So here she is. Hopefully all those slats get filled up with bats. So this one was just a single layer bat house right there. I talked about ventilation slats. There's a little bit of gaps around the entire top cap. And then I'll probably just take a saw and run some lines down there eventually. But um, I think it's, it's a beautiful piece. I love it. It fits right there. Nice. But looks great right there. Definitely is gonna be a good spot because all those bats are already coming in. They're probably gonna notice that this new structure is here. Gonna fly up into it and check it out themselves and see what's going on. Thank you so much for watching. This is a basic concept video on how to create a bat house. You can do one layer, two layers, three layers, as many as you want. You can make it wider, more narrow. Um, you can also bring them all the way down to the bottom if you'd like to do that. But like I said, I just kind of felt like it'd be better having some staggered layers in there. So thank you all so much for watching. Hope you learned. If you've got any questions, comment down below. I'll be sure to get to them if I can. And we'll see you in the next episode.